Is this thing working? Yes, it is. <laughs> so, I'm in the queue to check in at uh, Euro Tunnel in Folkestone, and it's Wednesday morning, and it's quarter past six. I had to set my alarm for five o'clock this morning. I bet you didn't know there was such a thing as five o'clock. Well, there is. I was checked in for a ten to seven uh, departure um, because I found that departures any later today uh, cost an arm and a leg. Ten to seven this morning it is, except when I got here to check in, I could get on a twenty to seven train. So that's the one I'm supposed to be getting. There's about six cars before I get to passport control now. And uh, Bailey is there. He's studiously ignoring me because it's too early in the morning for him to be sociable. Um, but I think if I come to the passport control with the camera in my hand, they might have something to say. So uh, I'll catch up with you later. So uh, now we're we're on the train. <laughs> uh, it's always a bit bizarre driving through a train. So we're crossing in a remarkably short time. It takes about 20-25 minutes to cross. So the whole crossing usually happens in about an hour. Oh, and I think we're nearly there. I can see the door shutting. Come on in, engine off, handbrake on, jump. Engine off, handbrake on first, you're all parked. Yeah, I'm parked. You made a jump, maybe. <laughs> I wasn't expecting you to pop up. So anyway, there we are, engine off. First gear, handbrake on. Now just to wait until we arrive in France. Now, Mr. Bailey, of course, is uh, riding shotgun. Come here, Mr. Bailey, and show yourself to the camera. Come on, come on. There we go. Look, there he is. You can see him now. Come on. Come on. Come here. Come on. Come on. You can do it. He doesn't want to. He says he's uncomfortable sitting and undignified sitting in my lap. <laughs> but, but he is there, now you know. Ooh, an engine's been turned off. I will talk to Mr. Bailey reassure him that everything's going to be all right and read my book oh we get another announcement the observant among you will have noticed that i have come out of the van we've rolled off the uh, euro tunnel train and uh, we've come to a very nice bit of beach that there is near graveling um, it's an enormous beach enormous it is we're going to be in the van a lot, doing lots of driving today, so it seemed to make sense to come and uh, get a bit of exercise before we did that. So here is that enormous beach. As you can see, it just goes on and on and on, and there's no one on it. This might be partially explained by the nuclear power station, which we might just be able to see. Over the dunes, is it there? Yeah, there's just the top of it there. But, you know, it's not that bad, really. It's just, it's just huge. We're off for a swim now. At least Bailey's going to have a swim. I'm just going to watch. <coughs> I've been walking towards the sea for, for, for three days now and it, 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 it doesn't seem to be getting any closer. There's no sign of any civilization and uh, we're exposed to the uh, merciless... Where is it? Yeah, there it is. Exposed to the merciless fury of the uh, midday sun. Well, it's nine o'clock actually, the midday sun. It's a big beach and the sea's a long way off this morning, but we'll keep walking. Well, I can see it. Um, it's just, you know, it's just uh, you know, two or three miles away now, I think. Well, uh, we've been walking uh, a couple of weeks now and it looks like we might be about to arrive at the sea. Look, it's getting wet and underfoot. And uh, I, the sea is kind of, oh, I can hear it now. 
and I can see the waves moving. It should only be take a couple of weeks to walk back to the van. Hopefully, might have lost a bit of weight by then. We're nearly at the sea. But there's a whole lot of bizarre experiences that you kind of take for granted because everything's so civilized and normal. So, you know, I've, I've driven onto a train this morning. And just think about that for a minute. I drove onto a train. I drove through the train. And then I drove out of the other end of the train and I was in another country. I mean, that's bizarre enough. But then you take into account the fact that it wasn't just that. I arrived in the other country by having been drawn through a tunnel under the ocean to get there. I mean, are we living in the future or what? That's just... Even now I can't quite believe it. Anyway, here's the sea. Let's go and play in the sea, Bailey, shall we? Let's go and play in the sea. You can get your feet wet, finally. Bailey has got all four feet in the water. Look at this. have been to the sea, you've seen it for yourself, we have been there. We now merely have uh, a fortnight's or so uh, expedition across the beach back to back to the rest of France. Or we may be lost to civilization forever and this log may be our last contact with the rest of the world. Uh, Mr Bailey has had a wash. He still somehow hasn't managed to rinse off the, the string of slobber <laughs> over his nose. He's not a slobbery dog. Um, but he gets a bit excited on the beach when there's a tennis ball. Now we just need to make him run around as much as possible over the remainder of this uh, trans beach expedition so that he dries himself off and doesn't shake too much sand over the interior of my van. If that was in Britain it would just have plain red and white stripes but I'm doing a spiral here and I like that. That has style and panache and some other things in French. I had forgotten how good this GH4 is. It's a cracking little camera. Just fantastic. Shoots 50 frames a second, so you can do that epic look. So, tea and breakfast all finished. We're now heading away from the nuclear power station and the beach, across this little nature reserve bit behind the, the, the dunes, onto the motorway to head for Hellesheim. I've remembered where we're going. <laughs> I have my sat-nav programmed. You, can you see my... I'm not sure if you can see my sat-nav. Anyway, it's over here, and it's programmed, and it thinks we'll get there at two o'clock if we don't stop. I think it's unlikely that we won't stop. Ooh, we've got some exciting lumpy speed bumps here. It's a busy morning at the Deschetterie this morning. Heading for the motorway. So here we are, and here's the border 
we're in Belgium now. Can you tell the difference? The speed limits have changed slightly and uh, if I were driving a lorry I'd be due to pay a toll um, which, is, which is collected any, uh, electronically I believe. More specifically of course we're in Flanders. I was once at a campsite in Belgium and as I waited to check out in the morning I wanted to leave early and the chap that, that ran the place uh, didn't arrive to unlock the gates until sometime after I was ready so I was sort of queuing up by the gates waiting to leave and two gardeners had arrived and they were queuing up waiting to get in because they wanted to get at the tools and get on with their gardening job and uh, as we sort of loafed around outside in the sunshine one of the gardeners looked at my van and kind of gestured to his friend and said no I said on this bus it can't be cars long and his friend replied in fluent Flemish and so the conversation went on with one speaking French and the other speaking Flemish and they clearly understood each other perfectly but neither would actually speak the other's language. One thing I've learned being a Brit travelling in mainland Europe is that it's essential to supply and maintain your own supply of decent tea. You just can't get it once you cross the channel. This is my tea supply and I'm, I'm working with teams of, of other people in different parts of Europe. So I go into their houses and I need a cup of tea. Of course they don't have any decent tea. Europeans just don't drink tea. Or maybe they drink black tea and they, it's Lipton's yellow label and things like this. But they have no idea how to make it. And it's, it's the kind of tea that you drink not terribly hot and without milk. Maybe with a bit of lemon, but yeah. It's tea, but not as we know it, Jim. So I have my own tea supply here. You'll notice it's loose tea, and I have a teapot. And uh, the danger is that I then go away and leave this in the field accommodation. So uh, it's got my name and phone number written on it in case I leave it behind, and I'm not going to be marooned somewhere um, in mainland Europe without a decent tea supply. So yeah, must maintain a tea supply at all times. We're British, damn it. On this occasion though, I'm drinking coffee. Not a total philistine. Well, it's now nearly half past nine, and that's half past nine German time, so that's half past ten. Is it? I always get confused about this. It's been a, it's been a long day anyway. Um, yeah, had that walk on the beach this morning, didn't we, Mr. Bailey? Do you want to come up and join me? Let's have Mr. Bailey come and join me. Come on, come on. There we go. Yes. It's, it's been a long day, hasn't it, Mr. Bailey? Yes, but you enjoyed your walk on the beach this morning, I think. Yes, and then it was just a long drive across across France and Belgium and eventually into Germany. Uh, oh, you're off again. Oh, OK, bye then. And uh, we arrived here, what, half past four? And then our farmer uh, was, was drilling the bits of field that needed drilling and, and I wanted to film the drilling, so I've done that and then filming uh, Melina and Maria doing their thing with quadrats and cameras and, and all sorts of other stuff which is all a bit proprietary which I shouldn't probably talk about too much but I think it's fair to say that it's been a long day and I'm quite tired I think I've got some nice shots in the can as ever it's nice to have brought my own accommodation and everything I can just Ooh, set up my bed right here and go to sleep I'm slowing down, aren't I? And this isn't a very dynamic bit of film. But that's what I've been up to today. So, bye for now. <laughs>